Uh, the first question here is, what is the definition of the church, quote unquote? How would you answer that, Father? Um, you could look that up in the Catholic Encyclopedia of 1911, 1913. Any actually Catholic apologetics book before Vatican II. The definition can be rather lengthy, actually. The church is the, the congregation of those who are validly baptized and united together with the true faith, one true faith of Christ, and who all participate in the same worship through the Holy Mass, the unbloody sacrifice of Calvary, and uh, the benefits of the sacraments that Christ established, and who are united also in rule under their legitimate pastors. That's generally where the definition of the church begins. You know, there are other aspects that also factor into the definition. When you look at that definition today, you immediately see that there is a dilemma posed by that, because those who claim to be the legitimate pastors are not united in faith, and not among themselves, and they're not even united, well, they're certainly not united with the traditional faith of the past, because that unity of faith extends to not only the current moment throughout the world, uh, geographically, but it, it also requires that the faith be one throughout time and not have changed. So even if the, all, the entire world all coalesced in believing the same thing, it couldn't be the true faith if it was not consistent with what the church had taught in the past, right? So that unity with the past is essential. The church is in a position right now where so many of those who are regarded as pastors in the church have actually deviated from and even uh, gone to the point of almost condemning, right, the belief of the past, notably Francis. So the church is in a state of a dilemma right now, and this has divided people very much. It really is a problem. The first mark of the church is unity, and that unity covers the unity of faith, of worship, and of government or rule under pastors. This always brings into the, it, you know, the question of apostolic succession. But again, whenever they talk about apostolic succession, too, they talk about that apostolic succession from the apostles, not only in terms of the powers given from one generation to another through the church, but also the, the oneness in faith. And inevitably, the question is always going to come back to that of, is there this continuity of faith, or was there a so-called rupture with the faith of the past. Mm -hmm. This is what is causing so much confusion and hardship today. Catholics trying to find their way. This is why the only real solution is for Catholics to obtain the, the old, the traditional catechisms, learn the traditional faith, and practice it in the traditional mass and sacraments. This even does answer the question of rule, because the rule ultimately that the Church follows is that of the Holy Ghost whom Christ sent, it is He guiding the Church through her sacred tradition that is ultimately our rule, and that has more authority than any one Pope or all the Popes put together, right? Because all the papacy itself was given to us by Christ in order to protect Catholic tradition. As uh, St. Paul said to the Galatians, if we, meaning the apostles themselves, or if an angel from heaven should come and preach a different gospel, hold him to be anathema, reject him. Right. Again, this is the reality of the situation here when you have those who present themselves as pastors in the church rejecting the faith of the past. So.